How do you make them better listeners? I think the way you make a person a better listener is you give them a taste of being listened to. Um, I was trying to get an appointment with a CEO. It had taken months to get his time, a big brawny football player kind of guy, and I'm there in front of him, and he's fiddling through his papers, and the last person he wants to be with is me, and that's clear. And, uh, and I thought that what we had to say would be worth his time, and so I said this to him in exactly this tone, a CEO who I'd never met, I said, how much time you got for me? And I said it louder than that. Uh, and he looked at me as if, I think your time's just about up. But he was disarmed uh, before he could fire me. He said, what? I said, yeah, how much time do you got for me? I said, check your appointment book. And, and he's like this, and he's getting the appointment book, he, and he says, uh, 20 minutes. And I could see the next thing was going to be, and they're all up. And I said, we're into minute four. There's something on your mind that's much more important uh, than listening to me. And I think what I have to speak to you about is worth your undivided attention, which you can't give me because there's something on your mind. So here's the deal. It's now minute five. Let's reschedule this when I can get your undivided attention or you never have to see me again uh, in your life. But take the next 15 minutes and take care of whatever's on your mind because it's not fair to me, it's not fair to other people, probably not even fair to yourself, but take care of that. And he looked at me, he paused, and he started to cry. And I said to myself, Mark, when are you going to learn that you shouldn't take your psychotherapy room out to the corporate world? I mean, I have a habit of doing this. And he looks at me and he says, you've known me for five minutes. There are people that have known me for 20 years that are 25 yards away, and they don't know what you know because I'm a private person. My wife's having a biopsy, and it looks pretty bad, and she's stronger than me. And she said, you go to work. So I'm at work, but I'm not really here. And I said, well, maybe you need to be with her. Maybe you shouldn't be here. Uh, maybe that's what you need to do. And he looked at me, and it was like a dog shaking water off after a rainstorm. He went, <laughs> like that, literally. And, and then he focused on me, and he said, I'm not as strong as her, but I'm pretty strong. I had two tours of duty in Vietnam. Uh, and you've got my undivided attention, and you've got your full 20 minutes.